This is part three of the oscillation of a pendulum. So here again is our equation of motion, uh, a um, ODE and theta. This is a single degree of freedom system. And the reason I say that is that the motion of this pendulum is completely described by theta and its derivatives. There's no, um, uh, no more than that one angle that we need to have to know if we have theta as a function of t, uh, which is uh, obtained from the solution of this equation. We know uh, how that uh, pendulum, what its, what its position is at any point in time. There's no theta one, theta two, theta three, which you would have in a more complicated system. I'll show later on a couple of uh, examples of uh, multiple degree of freedom systems so that we can compare and contrast those with this simple pendulum. Now, uh, another interesting thing about this ODE, notice that I have a second derivative and I have a zeroth order derivative. So if you don't have a derivative, you just have the variable itself, that's called a zeroth order derivative. The second order derivative and the, uh, the zeroth order derivative, there's no first order derivative here. Now, uh, the first order derivative is associated with damping. Damping is friction, and we have a frictionless pivot point. So this system is undamped. And because there's no friction, that means once it's put into motion, it will oscillate forever, okay? Uh, and because of this, we call this uh, second order system or any second order system without damping an oscillator, implying that it will oscillate indefinitely. Now, of course, there's no such thing as a physical system that has no um, damping in it. And if you had a, a real pendulum and you set it into motion, what would happen is that eventually it would wind down and uh, not um, oscillate at all. Depending upon how much friction you have in your system, that could take a little bit of time or a lot of time. But there are many, many systems. If you put this on a bearing or on a, a knife edge, has very little friction and it would swing for a certain period of time and be damped out eventually by the friction that it does have. And then also you're gonna have some wind friction for the uh, pendulum bob as it moves through the air. But we've just ignored all that and that, that uh, actually is useful too. Okay, um, now uh, also, if you have an oscillator, what happens is, and you, you make the coefficient of theta double dot one, which is what I've done here, I divided by L and made the coefficient of theta double dot term one, then the coefficient of the zero order derivative turns out to be the, nat the square of the natural frequency of the system. So we can get the coefficient of the theta term here, the zeroth order derivative term, take the square root, and we have the uh, oscillation rate of the pendulum, the oscillation, uh, well, the natural frequency of the pendulum. But make sure that you set uh, the coefficient of the theta of the double dot term to um, zero, or to one, sorry, uh, because if you forget to do that, you'll get an incorrect result. Now ask yourself the question, uh, what should the units of uh, the physical units of the natural frequency be? And uh, uh, you need to, uh, uh, units are often downplayed in analyses like this, but uh, my opinion is that they shouldn't be and that uh, you need to analyze uh, the units of G and of L to make sure that you have the correct units for natural frequency. And this, the units of this will be natural frequency squared. The natural frequency is in radians per second. Uh, so the natural frequency squared will be in radians per second squared. So um, I asked these questions and I'm not gonna answer them. That's for you to answer. Uh, what should the units of omega n be? What are they? And then, you know, you need to be able to figure this out because this is a good check on your, um, uh, your calculations. It keeps you from making mistakes. Uh, the other thing that's related to the natural frequency of the system is the period of the pendulum, okay? So what are the, what are, what is the period of the pendulum in terms of the device's physical parameters? Uh, 
And what I mean by physical parameters, well, I leave that as a question. What are the physical uh, parameters of this simple pendulum? Now, back to eight, um, I mentioned that this was a single degree of freedom system. And this shows a double pendulum. It's actually a serial double pendulum. And what I mean is that the second pendulum is actually pivots about the center of the first uh, pendulum's bob. So uh, to know the position of uh, this pendulum, you actually need to know two different um, displacements. The displacement, the angular displacement of the top uh, uh, pendulum and the angular displacement of the bottom pendulum. These two uh, thetas are not related to each other. Uh, so, uh, you, and you need to know two to know the uh, full position of this pendulum. So this is a two DOF system, a double uh, degree of freedom system or two degree of freedom system. Here's another example too. Uh, this is uh, two pendula uh, together. They're not hooked up the way that the previous example was. They are uh, parallel with each other, but there's a, a, a flexible element that joins those two. So again, we have, we have to know two, they're not rigidly connected. If this spring were rigid so that uh, this one could not move uh, relative to this one, then it would be a single degree of freedom system uh, with two pendula because, uh, you know, theta two would be equal to theta one all the time. But here we have a flexible element, so that's not the case. And we have another two degree of freedom system. So these two systems are examples of, um, uh, multiple degree of freedom systems compared with the single degree of freedom system that we have with a single, uh, simple pendulum. Now, uh, again, this is back to four. I mentioned that this was a free system because it had uh, a zero on the right hand side. So what makes this uh, pendulum swing? If the pendulum was just still sitting there vertically, not moving, what would it do? Well, it wouldn't do anything. It would just stay uh, vertical and theta would be equal to zero forever. So you know you don't have any motion at all. So that's a possibility, uh, but it's a very boring possibility and you know one that's a little trivial as they say. So how do you set this pendulum in motion? Uh, we don't have a force uh, that we're applying, applying at the pivot point. What we have is an initial value problem. So uh, implied here is that we actually uh, deflect the pendulum up to some angle, small angle, because we use that for our development of our equation of motion to get rid of the sine of theta and replace it with theta. So you can't go up more than about 10 degrees. And then at time t equals zero, you let you let it go, you pull your hand away, and the pendulum starts oscillating. That's exactly how you start an old-fashioned old pendulum clock, is you, you tilt the clock to start out with, and then you set it upright, and the tick-tock starts. Now, uh, I have some more questions that I want to ask, and uh, I'm not going to give the answer to these, so let me just go through them. Uh, what's the effect of M on the pendulum's oscillation? To answer that question, you need to reference uh, the um, uh, ODE and see what part M plays in that ODE. What's the effect of G on the pendulum's oscillation? Again, look at the ODE. Uh, G actually plays a role in the ODE, and I told you what that was. So the way I like to ask this question is, you know, what if we had a G that was double compare two cases, one with G and one with 2G, what would be the difference in the way that the pendulum oscillated? L, again, the same question, what would be the case or what would happen if we had L, everything else stays the same, and then we double the length of the pendulum, what would that do to the motion of the pendulum? What about theta zero? Theta zero is the initial deflection angle. Okay, we lift the pendulum up and then we let it go. So, again, I like this doubling of things. What if we uh, raise the pendulum up five degrees and let it go? 
how would that differ from the case where we raise the pendulum up? Or let's say we have two pendulum pendula that are exactly the same. They're sitting side by side. We raise one uh, pendulum up five, we raise the other pendulum up 10 degrees, and then we let both of them go. What would be the difference in their motion? And uh, uh, for instance, would the, uh, uh, the pendulum that we deflected five degrees, would, it, uh, would its oscillations be faster than the pendulum that we deflected 10 degrees because it has less far to travel? So questions like this are real practical questions that uh, you need to be able to answer. If you can't answer them, then you don't really understand the pendulum very well. Uh, what if we raised it up five degrees by rotating it clockwise versus negative five, no, counterclockwise, sorry, versus uh, raising it up uh, by lifting it to the right five degrees. What would be the difference? Let's say we have two pendula. They're side by side. We deflect uh, the uh, one of them to the uh, right. That would be positive five degrees. And we, at the same time, we reflect the, we deflect the other one to the left, negative five degrees. And then at the same instant in time, we took our hands away from both of them. What would the um, difference be between the, the plots of theta as a function of time? So, design a pendulum that would be of a convenient size. What I mean by that is one that maybe we could set up in a lab that would oscillate at 0.5 hertz. Now, um, what uh, you need to get used to the hertz measurement. That's one cycle per second. So what this would mean is that in one second, we would go through half a cycle. Is that correct? Um, well, we'd go through wait, one cycle per second. I believe that that's the case. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work this out. Um, uh, that would mean in two seconds, we would go through the entire cycle. So we should be able to swing. Yes, uh, we are going from, uh, let's say we raise it to the right and we let it go. It will take half a second to get over to the other side. And then it'll take another half second to come back. So it takes two seconds to actually go from uh, the initial position back to the same position, or uh, one second to go from one side of the uh, swing to the other side of the swing. More questions. Uh, let's say the pendulum had a rod length of one meter long. What would the mass have to be for the pendulum to oscillate at, point, uh, at 0 0.5 hertz? What would the gravitational acceleration have to be for a pendulum with a rod length of one meter to oscillate at 0.5 hertz? So if you took the above pendulum and you halved its rod length, so you made its rod length one, one half meter, one half meter, it's that it's one half meter long, what would you have to do to the mass to have the same oscillation rate? And then for this new pendulum, i.e. the one with a rod length of half a meter, what would the gravitational acceleration have to be to have the same oscillation rate, namely 0 0.5 um, uh, hertz? Let's go back to the initial conditions. What would be the maximum speed of the pendulum if the initial deflection were 5 degrees? Back to the initial conditions again. What would be the maximum speed of the pendulum if the initial deflection were 10 degrees? Uh, is the uh, maximum speed of the 10 degree uh, pendulum uh, twice the maximum speed of the five degree pendulum? And then for the five degree case, plot the velocity as a function of time, assuming it is sinusoidal and that the pendulum oscillation rate is 0 0.5 hertz. Okay, so um, what I mean by velocity here is, uh, well, uh, I was going to say angular velocity. Um, let's do both. Plot the angular velocity as a function of time, assuming that it's sinusoidal. 
and then plot the linear velocity of the pendulum bob as a function of time. And that's the end of this presentation. So there are a lot of questions here to think about. And uh, if you can answer all of those questions, I would say that you understand uh, the uh, motion of a pendulum fairly well. Again, uh, this is uh, a pendulum is a very simple system, but you need to understand very simple systems before you can understand more complicated systems. Thanks for watching.